Hello, welcome to this week's vlog. Wow, the seasons are changing fast. Now it's the season of oxide daisies. Absolutely glorious sight when you're having to travel the country's motorways and such like. Really beautiful and absolutely packed with insect life. They really do attract everything from hoverflies, beetles, flies, to things like the interesting crab spider waiting on them to feast on animals coming to drink the nectar. So it's all going on in a micro habitat, even of just a patch of oxide daisies. Always lots to see in nature. A countryside walk anywhere at any time of the year is always gonna throw up something interesting, beautiful and exciting. Enjoy the rest of the West. Enjoy the rest of this week's vlog. What a smashing weekend. Well, we say weekend, it's Thursday and Friday this week because of the Jubilee or because of the Jubilee. Uh, look at this down here. We literally had to put in rows of seating and standing room only. Um, what a brilliant weekend. The actual snake talk, it was packed, really busy in the insect talk here. We had Ari around the back with all their great stuff. What a great place to sort of enthrall people in wildlife, um, exotic animals, birds of prey, nature. And this weekend for sure was exactly what I envisaged when we started opening these weekends last summer. Um, please spread the word. We want everyone to come here and just have a fantastic day. You know what the best display was? Nigel the Harris up. Brilliant. When the birds are good, you don't need anything special. The birds do the work for you. Had an overnight stop in Norfolk. Really wanted to see some adders. It is the start of June. Unfortunately, the weather's been pants for that. Uh, doesn't bother us for anything else. But we're back in this car park and a little tiny bit of coast we'll have to walk along. Um, school tomorrow is micro habitats including rock pools so I'm going to see if I find anything on the strand line mermaids purses or empty shells and things for those guys but we're back in this car park look at this now these two families or rather the two couples in these cars are totally unrelated arrived at different times and so on every time I don't get it I don't understand it it's like open park within door banging you know distance of the other vehicle and then look nothing Nothing, nothing, not a car, loads, tons of spaces. And then the same over there. So we're parked here. Take your life, we might be able to open the back door when we get back. It's weird, human nature is weird. It never ceases to amaze me. What made those people, on a day where it's not hiding about, feel the need to park, touching doors with the only other car there? Bizarre. The last time we came here was winter. It was lovely. And I thought I'd be glad to go back in the spring. Find a few adders, my fave. Well, now it's June. We're about to get knocked off the top of a hill. Ready? Remember?
got back to the car and I thought to myself, well, although over there, well, there's one gone, there was now a third car. I thought, actually, no one's parked next to us. I'm just about to start the engine. <laughs> it is unbelievable. I just don't get it. And I'm someone that's really neat and tidy with stuff. So it's not, it's not that. It's weird human nature. Just hold it against your face, Ryan. Put it on your face like it's caught you. <laughs> Jeez, that is terrible. Cool, blimey, let's have a look again. Harp eagle, most powerful eagle in the world. The extinct Haas seagull. Look at the size of that. Harp eagle, wimp status. So we all know a field of monocrops is dead. Desert right there. One species lives there. And that's it. But fortunately, lots of set aside, wide band, good hedgerows, all the way around this headland and plot of land here. Plenty of good hedgerows, birds to nest in, dragonfly over there. But this set aside, all coming into flower. We've had oxide daisies further down. We've got knapweeds, vetches, vetchlings, clovers. This is a real, not only nectar haven for uh, all kinds of invertebrates, it's also places where things like shrews and short-tailed voles can live. And that gives the local barn owls good corridors to patrol along in the evening. Butterflies. So, acres of desert. Fortunately, some good meadow land all around the edges. So in these vlogs lately, I've been showing you guys around the Falcon Centre and saying, come and see us here at Holdenby House and Icarus Falconry. I haven't really been around the garden as much lately. I, I just don't get time. So I'm in the kitchen garden right now. Look at that, all that lovely produce. Make me quite hungry. So we've got all that over there. I'm just actually raiding my cactus that the gardener's kind of overwintered in the greenhouses here. I've decided the frost is not going to be back again in June, but who knows? Lots of kitchen garden stuff here. And I'll flip the camera around quickly and just show you a couple bit more, a couple bit more, a couple more little nuggets and, and the little corners of the wonderful gardens here at Holdenby. Come on. So like any good garden, it's a, a journey of mystery of what's around the corner and opening up into different areas. So I think last time you guys would have seen this area in my vlog, it was, it was winter. Haha, <laughs> we saw you. Look at that. Things are really, really growing up now. You can imagine how important these kind of plants are in the garden because one thing we have here on the Holdenby Estate, amongst lots of wildlife, is lots of different species of bee. And on that note, or offered a tangent, hopefully it's gonna be good enough weather for me to leave my moth trap outside. It hasn't got a rain cover, so I do need it to dry night and see what moths are around now in June. Hopefully for our guests to see during the weekend openings. As you come through here, Make your way down to the flying lawn, just to the right at the end there, which hopefully you've seen on some of our vlogs. It really is, and it's not, what I can't get across to you guys is, oh, the wonderful perfumes coming off some of these flowers. It's a really thick, sweaty, muggy day today, so it's really heady with perfume. There's so much to see again, just a little snippet. I'm not gonna show you much. I want you to come and see it, but more importantly, wow, I've got so much to do. It really is intrigue and interest as you go 
come through the gardens, lots to see. Oh, the smell there. There's a fox bin down here for sure. Look at that. What a den. What a den for any pity. These wood pigeons are feisty today. As we come out here, the, the large pond. A magnificent pheasant there. Look at him. Come and see us. Holdenby.com slash the openings. Lots more gardens to explore. Flying displays, wildlife talks, all about being hands-on and interactive as well with some of this stuff. And also, of course, and also, of course, honeysuckle there. The small wildlife menagerie that we're growing up. Come and see Roxy the Fox, Norman the Hedgehog. And our wonderful birds of prey in their housing, their enclosures, and of course, flying wild and free as well. Goodness me, the aroma from those guys. Absolutely beautiful. Anyway, I've got to head back and get some really great cactus. Oh, there's one of the gardeners. He doesn't seem to be doing much, does he? No, just scratching their heads. Wishbow sitting, ready, go. <laughs> got it? Where is it? It is, look, Roxy. What's this? Sit. Roxy, sit. Good girl, sit. Go get it. Overlaying and playing. Ready? Ah, where's he gone? Where's he gone? Where's he gone? Is it? Where's he gone? Ready? Come on then. Ready? Roxy. Ready? Sit. Get it. Good girl. Very good girl. I'm getting it. Yay. Jumping on it. Where's he gone? Are you worn out now? Hey? Are you worn out? Hey? What are you doing? You beauty. Hmm. A good girl? Yes. These mulling moth caterpillars are getting bigger by the day. I love mulling. I love the leaves. I love the yellow flower spikes. And I do love the fact that you always get mulling moth caterpillars munching on them. Ah. What looks like a little pygmy shrew, maybe just a young shrew, found dead on the path at the Fulcrum Centre. In my life, especially when I was a child and paid more attention to the smaller things, I have found dozens of dead shrews randomly on country paths and walkways through the grass. Never anything wrong with them, well there is, it's dead. But never signs of injury. And even on Facebook groups and forums, I've never had anyone conclusively explain to me why a shrew would be randomly dropped down dead on a path or a path through the grass. Bizarre. What an amazing thing. That lovely, long, wiggly sensory nose. Tiny, tiny eyes, almost useless. Whiskers for feeling around. Good hearing and the high-pitched scream of shrews and voles and things fighting in the grass. From my childhood, something now that I don't notice. Anyway, the ants are enjoying their meal. Guest mower this week. Bob Wilson, Chainsaw Car, look at the decision. And all the gear. Didn't go out week, what's up friends? There he goes. Really bizarre. I just found another one. Different one. <laughs> in one of the back rooms just inside the door. That is just weird. Oh my goodness, he's so cute, bless him. Another dead shrew. What is going on? Weird. Okay, this is now weird. Third one on the floor in the back room. So that's two near each other and one a long way from the back from a shrew's point of view. That wasn't made out of tortoise. So the other ones, you know, a good 
50 yards, 100 yards of walking away. No direct route here, even for a shrew. Two in this room, not far from the door to the outside, and the first one I showed you. Weird. So even if these are youngsters that had sort of lost their mum, the other one was miles away. How very strange. The mystery of three dead shrews and a very noisy tortoise. So this is little 47, this is Kyle's bird. She comes here at the weekend and Kyle flies her to the lure and she's absolutely dynamite. And for a bird of prey, have a look at the colouring and markings on this bird. Birds of prey have got beautiful markings, haven't they? But this one's got colour. And of all the artwork in Emily's little gift shop that Emily paints and portrays of the birds that we have here, even though this is Kyle's, the ones depicting 47 here, sell out faster than anything else and we think it must just be these pretty colours because she's not a bird that I guess fly on experience days. They just buy them because the artwork looks beautiful. Look at that. An American kestrel. I would like a peregrine falcon. A little love oh, that's in that rare cage. Oh, look at that. She's one of those rare crossing of anything where she's generally the best of both of her parents. Beautiful. This is crazy. There's another one. There's another one. This is the next day. I think her mother, Shrew's come in with her babies and got spooked and left them and they've all panicked and starved, bless them. But it's very strange. Three of them in a similar area and one of them, from a Shrew's point of view, miles away. How weird. And I have to say, he's a little bit smelly. I think the flies have been at him already. I have to say, running two animal businesses and all the non-fun bits it involves can be very, very stressful. And right now, I think I envy Roxy quite a bit. Look at that. What a life. What care in the world. I finally got my cactus back from the big, lovely greenhouses here at Holdenby where Matt the Gardener's kindly overwintered them for me. Now back in the Falkland Centre, give you some idea. I don't know, this is my head height. <laughs> we'll try our best. They're looking great. They need a good, good drink now though. They're best to keep them dry during the winter. A little bit withered, so time to fatten them up. Home. This is a little peregrine tear son, a male peregrine. It's going to be imprinted and hand reared. But isn't it, isn't it cute? Weird language over here. This is because people are discussing Kyle's really fat girlfriend. I don't know why she's so fat. And this little fluff ball, in eight weeks or less, is going to be fully grown, fully feathered, and up in the sky. It's going to be imprinted and reared and he's going to be tame hacked by Kyle which means as soon as he can fly he can fly away and do what he likes and he'll come back at feeding time well to be honest he'll probably hang around and won't go anywhere but he's, he's going to be free to fly and build his muscles up at the minute he can and given all of the freedom he wants coming back in the evening to roost and to feed unbelievable peregrine about eight weeks Hatching from an egg to being fully formed. It is ridiculous. Think how much meat the parents have to get these birds in the wild for that kind of growth rate. Almost faster than the bamboo in my garden. And now it's feeding time. It's already eaten quite well, but he's still going because he's got to turn that food. He's basically turning quail meat and rat meat into peregrine circle of life and the way nature works converting one lot of protein basically into another form <laughs>